don't really know what we're going to expect. We're going to spend the day just observing what's going on with the gathers. I've been covering wild horses for three or four years now for Nevada. I feel like I'd be remiss to not be out here just really seeing firsthand what exactly a gather looks like. Right here, we've got some horses on the, I guess to be the southeast side of the Spruce Mountain HMA. Since we got a big rain event last night, they've moved off the mountain and we saw quite a few down here in the valley. So we set this trap up last night in a kind of a natural area that they would like to travel. So they're gonna try to move them down into the flat, take them down a little ways and then turn them and let them think that they're getting away naturally back up to the mountain and kind of guide them into the wings and then ultimately into the panels. Wild horses are what I would call the apex grazer. They move faster, they consume more, they run other animals off water. They're kind of the Arnold Schwarzenegger of rangelands. The terrain that these horses go on, it's really hard to be able to get ahead of something if you're on a saddle horse. You know, it's, it's very dangerous if you're out here horseback. You know, I've, I've done it that way. I've done it with a helicopter, I've done water bait trap, and by far the most humane way to gather horses, in my opinion, is with the helicopter. In such a dry state, apparently horses will sacrifice the ability to find food so that they have access to water. What's gonna happen with climate change? The horses that are in the lower elevation HMAs, that's where water's gonna dry out first. And they're gonna be in a world of hurt. BLM, like you said, moves very slowly. I have reported thin animals to them multiple times. It'll be four or five months before they can get a gather put together. And it's due to the rules and regulations that their hands are tied by. And then they get litigated when they try and get a gather put together. And it just breaks my heart. So this is the uh, Spruce Pequop HMA, and we just finished trapping for the day, and these guys are loading the trap back up in the trailer, and then we're gonna go build another trap in the morning on the Go Shoot HMA. When these guys are done loading everything up, the only thing you'll see left is tracks. I wouldn't say that the operation part is a big challenge anymore for me. It's kind of the, everything that surrounds it. The political aspect of it is definitely the the toughest part for me to get my mind around. There is what I consider abuse. I consider that the uh, Wild and Roaming Horses and Burrows Act that demands for humane handling is not being done. The Comprehensive Animal Welfare Program policy is not uh, good enough. It needs to be shored up and it needs to be enforced. There is not enforcement of it. I'm a layer of public oversight. I do not accept compensation. If I see something, I will document it because the public deserves to know what's happening to the horses and the horses deserve it too. The American Wild Horse Campaign shared this video, they say shows one getting injured trying to escape. We went and visited the, the trap area once the gather was complete, just to kind of see the layout of what the horses were going through. And now we're headed over to the holding area where we will be able to observe the horses up close that were just rounded up. Just to make sure that the horses are humanely treated. That is what I'm here for mainly, making sure the contractors have, you know, their trucks are in working order, the traps are set up right, there's no bob wire fencing that's not marked. Because I had it in my mind, like from social media aspect of, oh my God, you know, it's horrible, it's horrible. It's The roundups are just horrible. It's not really what people perceive them to be. When you come out here, you see that people do care. And it's hard for people to see that. And if you can't have some kind of working relationship with the people that manage these horses, how is there ever gonna be change? I think everyone who was out here was very passionate about the cause from very diverse standpoints. And I think that that is really the crux of the question of how to manage wild horses in Nevada, is just the level of passion these animals bring is 
incredibly high. None of us would be here if we didn't love the horses. We wouldn't go through all of this BS if we didn't truly care about the rangeland and the horses. I think that point gets missed big time.